And today I am joined by Lachlan, who is an electronics engineer for the Navy. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So firstly, what or who was your inspiration for choosing a career in the Navy? Uh, so my dad was in the Navy uh, and then my brother also joined about three years before I did. Uh, so it's either I'm um, very unoriginal <laughs> or I had a pretty good insight into kind of what the training was like uh, and then also the benefits that joining the Navy gives you. So uh, getting a salary while I was going to university was pretty good uh, and then coming out of that with a, a guaranteed job and a, um, a career continuum and progression that was like fairly well defined was, uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if it was one or both of those things, but definitely something in there. Kind of a no-brainer, isn't it though? Like it's 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 such a good opportunity, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, going to, getting paid while you're going to uni and then they get you with a job at the end. And you're like, yeah. damn it. I know, that sucks, not. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so what were you doing before you joined the Navy? Did you sort of go straight into this out of high school or, or what, what was sort of the career progression into that? Uh, I took a gap year out of high school. Uh, that's just because I started the DFR process too late in the year. So I needed another year after year 12 so I could uh, finish that process and yeah. uh, get accepted. So uh, I worked at Baker's Delight for about 12 months while I was waiting to join the Navy. Yeah, cool. That is the best day for going around, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, can you tell us a bit about how you became an electronics engineer? So, you know, like, you don't just jump straight into something like that. Like, how did that sort of come about? Yeah, so uh, the training pipeline for me uh, went for about nine years, really, to get to, uh, like, being fully qualified. Uh, so there's all the like the generic Navy training and stuff at the start uh, and then I did my um, four-year degree through ADFA uh, and I had another half year of uh, specific junior engineer training with the Navy. Uh, from there I was kind of like uh, posted to sea as a, a understudy of some engineers uh, to get some experience there. Uh, after that I got my first qualification, uh, Webster Electrical Certificate of Competence. Uh, so that's kind of like the first milestone you've got to reach. Uh, from there, I actually uh, moved over to submarines. So I put some extra training pipeline uh, in my career there and uh, took about six months training at the submarine school, followed by another 12 months understudy uh, on a submarine. Wow. Uh, from, yeah, so uh, that's where I got my dolphins, which is like my second career milestone, really. Yep. Uh, from there, I posted ashore for a bit to uh, get some wider experience and work on my, my final qualification, which is the weapons electrical uh, charge qualification. Oh. Uh, so that took me, yeah, another probably 18 months ashore studying for that uh, to achieve that. Uh, so I got that last year, uh, which was when I was technically finished my all of the training that I needed to do. So amazing. Yeah, uh, a fairly long journey, but uh, yeah. it was good. That's awesome. And like, you know, you get to pay, you be paid to learn as well, which, you know, you touched on earlier. It's such an awesome experience. Um, so what does an electronics engineer actually do though? What What is it that, yeah, you do? And you mentioned weapons, like, is that are you making weapons or? <laughs> uh, not, not really. So technically my, my job is, uh, I'm a Submariner Weapons Electrical Engineering Officer. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of, has a few facets to it. Uh, so uh, kind of the biggest one is uh, the, I'm the technical authority for the electronic systems on board the submarine. Uh, so I'm responsible for overseeing the maintenance, making sure everything works when we need it to work. Uh, and then if there is again, any kind of defects that come up, I need to kind of translate those defects into a capability limitation and then convey that to the command team. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of like the technical side of my job. Um, the weapons component, uh, so I own, or I'm responsible for all the weapons that are on board, not necessarily the, the discharge system, that's a, a different job on board, but uh, the weapons themselves I'm responsible for. Yeah. Uh, and then if we are uh, firing any of those weapons, I become the fire control officer and uh, I'm responsible for uh, the discharge and engagement of those weapons. So that's yeah. where like the weapon side <laughs> comes in. Uh, and then the kind of, the next facet would be uh, the people side, so I'm the head of department and divisional officer for the uh, weapons electrical department. So that's that's more about um, 
leading the team and making sure everyone's fully supported to, make, to be able to do their jobs when we need to do them. Yeah. Uh, and then the third component is while I'm on watch, I'm the, the ship control officer of the watch. Uh, so that's about uh, managing kind of the fluid states and the bodily weight of the submarine and making sure the platform's in a in a state to achieve the aim when we need to. Wow, amazing, that's so cool. So what does a sort of typical day look like for you in your schedule then? Yeah, so it, it kind of varies if I'm at sea or alongside. Uh, at sea is pre-regimented. I, I work for six hours and then I've got six hours off and then I work for six hours and then I've got six hours off and I just, uh, do that on repeat while I'm at sea. Um, and then alongside, um, it can it can vary a lot depending on where in the, the boat schedule we're at. Uh, so at the moment we're in a, in a maintenance period. Uh, so uh, my day is mostly involved around making sure all the maintenance is happening as it should, uh, making sure all of my team is getting on courses that they need to get to, taking leave so they can take some respite. Yeah. Um, and then also looking at the, the changes that are happening to our platform and assessing the risks involved with, with some of those changes and uh, making sure we leave the maintenance period in the best possible state, both the platform and the people. Yeah, cool. Well, that sounds great. Now, um, can you tell us a bit about being out at sea? Have you had um, some awesome or interesting experiences that you can share with us out at sea? Uh, I've definitely had some interesting experiences. Uh, some, of, some of the ones, are, uh, probably the most interesting one uh, was when I was quite junior in my qualifications, I just earned my, my dolphins, uh, which is when you become a qualified submariner. Um, and I was left on the watch by myself as the ship control. Uh, and we were, we were bottoming the submarine. Uh, so putting the submarine on the bottom of the ocean. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was responsible for like moving the water and controlling the descent rate. So we, we touched the bottom and touched it instead of hit it. So that was, that was uh, fairly intense. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> um, yeah, you definitely wouldn't want to go kaboom at the bottom of it. No, so yeah, there's imagine. definitely a good way and a bad way to do it. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be so fun. So when you're down under there, do you see much like sea life? Uh, occasionally. So we only really have the periscopes up when they're above water. Um, okay. So we, but we do have a camera that we can look outside with, and we've seen a couple of fish on the camera. It's always very exciting when you get one. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, so how, I mean, well, you said earlier that your father and your brother were also part of the Navy. Um, yep. How did your friends and family feel about your career choice? Obviously, you know, they've sort of, some of them have gone down that path themselves, so I'm just sure they would have been supportive, but um, what, what were your sort of friends and family saying about it? Uh, everyone was everyone was generally supportive. Uh, I think the biggest thing was uh, some of my friends were concerned about the, the Rosso, where they're like, oh, you've signed up for nine years. Uh, and it kind of comes back to the, yeah, but four years of them, I'm at uni. And then they give, they force me to have a job for the next five years. Like, I, I was I was pretty okay with it, but it was a bit yeah. shocking for, for some of them. Okay, well, there you go. But yeah, gonna go to uni or do some sort of study after school, I guess. Yeah, what are like, you gonna do when you leave uni? Get a job? Or... Exactly. <laughs> you just gotta guarantee Damn, they got to guarantee what happens. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so, um, what does the military sort of training side of thing look like um, for the Navy? Yeah, so it kind of depends what phase you're in. You kind of, um, it starts where you've got a very strict regime and you're getting told what to do. Uh, every every minute of your life type thing and uh, as you progress through the training you kind of get more trust put in you and they back off and you're kind of left up to your own devices to achieve what they tell you you need to get done yeah uh, yeah so it kind of starts off very regimented and then uh, as you move through it you kind of get more freedoms as you go on that's not a bad thing straight out of high school though, you know, it's just, instead of having your mum telling you what you have to do all the time, you know, you can at least go into a job where your routine set, this is what you have to do to survive yeah. and yeah. And they cook all your food for you, so that's fine. Yeah. Hello, oh my gosh, it just keeps getting better and better. Um, what would you say some of your career highlights have been so far? Uh, definitely, I would say, as I was mentioning, the qualifications, getting my uh, weapons electrical uh, charge qualification has definitely been my, my highlight, kind of uh, 
all of my training had led up to, to that moment. So that was a huge sigh of relief when I, when I got there. Got there, yeah, totally. Um, and then, so what sort of skills have you gained from, um, from achieving this goal um, in your role? Uh, I think communication is the biggest skill that I've had to, to pick up along the way. Uh, kind of coordinating several different organisations to be on the same page and um, achieve the same goal is, can be quite challenging. So I think that's definitely uh, the biggest skill that I've picked up is communications. Yeah, totally. Um, and what has sort of pleasantly surprised you about the Navy? Did you have any sort of preconceptions or misconceptions yourself before joining? And then has there been something that's pleasantly surprised you? Uh, I had a, a pretty good insight into what it was like with, with my uh, dad and brother, so I wouldn't say anything has been too surprising, but I think the, the people you meet along the way are probably the, um, yeah, the best part. I wouldn't call it surprising, but yeah, definitely has been really good. Yes, oh, very nice. And then, so what do you sort of get up to on your days off? What, what does that sort of look like? Um, and your days off, is that literally, is it weekends or is it sort of just depending on the roster or how, do, how does that work? Yeah, so it'll depend uh, what you're doing. So if you're on a, in a shore position, it'll be like a standard Monday to Friday um, job. And then you, you might have a duty where you need to be on base for 24 hours, maybe like uh, once a month, maybe once every two months. Yeah. Uh, so your weekends are generally free for that. Uh, but if you're on a, a seagoing platform, then it depends on uh, what the platform's doing at the time. So you, you might be at sea for uh, months at a time, or you might be just at sea from Monday to Friday. So okay. uh, yeah, your time off really depends on what job you're doing at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I kind of I'll go one of two extremes. I'll either uh, go to the gym, I'll go go surfing, or I'll play board games and video games all weekend. Yeah. I kind of. I'll, <laughs> Sometimes feel. both, but generally it's one or the other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, so what advice would you give to students out there who are wanting to pursue a career as an electronics engineer with the Navy? Uh, I think I would say don't pay off English. When I was going through, I was kind of thinking engineering, entirely focused, maths, physics. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that's all I'd need to, to be an engineer. Uh, but I can guarantee you I write way more emails than I do Laplace transforms in a standard day. So uh, you can't undervalue English just because you're trying to be an engineer. Yeah, yeah, that's really good advice for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Lachlan. If students are listening and they'd like to find out more about a career with the Navy, then they can head to the links that are up on the screen now. But we really appreciate your time today. And um, yeah, it was really great to hear about your career so far. Thanks for having me.